Welcome to this video on the Modern Excel Webcast. My name is David Benheim and I am an MVP with Excel. We're going to look at Power Query errors in this case, the different types of errors, how they can come about, how to detect them, and how to prevent them. Power Query can lead to lots of errors and it can be hard to determine where they come from or what they are. I'm going to, in this video, show you the different types of errors, whether it's cell level errors like this, step level errors like this, or even connection level errors like this. And I'm gonna show you the most common types of errors, how you can actually detect them and figure out what they are and how to fix them. So we're covering Power BI and Excel in this video. And that is important because Power Query is a subcomponent of both products. So let's start off with the cell level errors. So something like this. When you load into Excel or Power BI, it tells you that there's errors here. And you can hover over it in Excel to have this pop up. If I click on this button, this will create a new query that shows me only my errors. However, I really advise against this. Um, I have a better way of dealing with this that gets to the same issue, but I'm going to right click here and press delete. So don't do that. In fact, uh, we're going to do the same idea, but in a smarter way. First, let's get our view settings right. And this is really important whenever you are investigating queries. So click on the view tab and you've got your formula bar. You can turn that on or off, make sure that's on. Same with the query settings on the right, make sure that's on. And here you can have the queries pane on the left. Make sure you expand that so we can work with it. So we're going to go to add column and we're going to add an index column. Just click the default one is fine. It makes the first row zero and the last row is says 23 in the index column and that's row 24, it's just minus one. And then we're going to right click here and choose reference. This is going to be our query investigation, a little bit like the default one, but we're gonna be a bit smarter with it. So let's go to our index column. Let's right click it and let's choose unpivot other columns. You can also get unpivot other columns from the transform tab over here. Um, what that does is it gives us three columns, one with the index column, one with the column name, which it calls attributes, and one with a value here. And this value can be virtually anything, as you can see, and it can have the errors. The thing that we're trying to get to is what is the intersection of column name and row number that has this error that comes in. So as you can see, row zero returns one, two, three, four, five, six columns, because index is column number seven, and then row number one will return seven as well. And as you can see here, right until seven, I get to that, and then it keeps going, etc. So the cool thing about this is that we now have the column name, the row name, and the value here. So I can go to the value and I can go to the home tab, choose keep rows and keep errors. And now I get to exactly what the errors are, like this. And just so you're aware, it was easy to see when I had 24 rows of data where the errors are, in a real world scenario, you're very likely to have many, many, many more rows. I mean, maybe tens of thousands, so it's not very easy to see that. Um, you do have these error bars up here, which might be able to tell you uh, where they're coming from. Uh, so the red means that there are errors. This sort of dashed line means it's undetermined. The green means there's no errors. There's also uh, gray, which could mean blanks that I don't have in here but that's how it could show it. Although from my experience, this doesn't always work. And in any case, you do not want to click remove errors because for the most part, you're not trying to remove errors. You're trying to identify where the errors come from so you can fix it at the source level. So another thing that I've noticed is that if you try to filter where you have that error, it says list may be incomplete. So where you have anything with an error, your filter buttons say it might be incomplete. Here it's fine. Here again, it's saying it might be incomplete. So I did say where those errors come from. It's most often when you have cell level errors like this from a change type column. In fact, change type is a setting that automatically comes up at many, many times during your queries, 
but I'm gonna show you how to disable that. In effect, you don't wanna do a change type until near the end of your query or until you really, really have to do it. To demo an example of that, let's say I click on this column, I choose split column by delimiter, and I wanna split it at the at symbol and press okay. That not only adds the split column by delimiter, but also adds the change type by default, which I didn't tell it to do. This happens in a lot of instances, the first time you grab data into Power Query or when you do certain steps. And there is a way to disable that in the newer versions I'm gonna show you later on, along with other option changes that I recommend. So over here I am in Power BI and you do have in certain instances this sort of row level query, which came from another very common source, which is renaming columns. So let's see what happened. So if you click on the last step and then click go to error, this will jump to the step that first references something that is an error. Generally, this is to do with the naming of a column, although it could be for a number of other reasons. Uh, if I click there, then I go to the previous step. The previous step is where I rename it. So I rename unit sold to units, and then the next step, sorted rows, I'm sorting by the column that says unit sold. So if I move this one around, or if I just exit and delete it, then that means that this step no longer breaks. I go back to my last one, and now I still have an error. So I click on go to error, and then will, this will jump just back one step. And the one above that is rename columns. Uh, and this is the one where, again, I have the same idea where I renamed something. Note that this could be up here. So now go to error jumps there. It's not the step directly preceding it, but it could be a few above. Also note that if I just have these steps, my, my last step doesn't have a thing that says go to error. And that is because this is the actual step with the first error. So if you don't see this, it could be for one of two reasons. Firstly, you are in the step in question, or secondly, the step in question is in a previous precedent query. So let's look at that in the next example. So here I have some errors loaded to Power BI, although Excel would look the same. It says that loading blocked by failures from other queries, or in certain ones, it tells me what's going on. The column employee wasn't found, but in a lot of them, it tells me that. Uh, when you do have this pop up, and you very often you will break one thing in a query and then a lot, a lot of the queries will break. And that is because we often, in a more sophisticated layout of Power Query, tend to build queries that are dependent on each other uh, along various different ways. So when you get this, try and go to one of them that looks slightly different. Uh, avoid these ones. And sometimes the one that looks slightly different says something that is useful. But like this one says something different. But in effect, we're going to look at how to edit it. So if you get that error, uh, go to transform data. And then you should open your queries pane on the left, you'll see the icons this next to the ones that are causing issues. Now, I already showed you how you can go to the error in if it's in that query. But in this case, it's I don't see that. And the reason why I don't see that is because actually, the error comes from a precedent query. A precedent query means that effectively this query starts off where another one finished. If I click on the source step, the source step is called and another, and this is another query. And this one in effect has its go-to error. So this one has nothing. This one has its go-to error. And then I can click on this and I can see what the issue is and I can fix it later on. However, in this case, the column employee of the table wasn't found. So my source has the word person and I need to go back again. And the source here says equals precedent query, this one. And here you might remember that I renamed employee for person, but if I exit out of that, click delete, I can see all of these end up fixing there. So if you don't see it, and if all it says is uh, that the yellow box that says there's an error and there's no go-to error, then it's probably related to the precedent one before that. 
Another useful view is if you go to the view tab, you have query dependencies. And here you can have a list of how things depend to another. So yet another, this is just a reference of and another. <laughs> Um, and then if I click on each of them, it will show me which ones are linked to do that. Well, you have two lines like this. This could be from a merge query or an append query. When you have one line like this, this is from a direct reference. So to show you that, yet another. So if I'm here and I right click and I choose reference, and let me also do a duplicate like this. So I'm going to call this duplicate. And the other one I'm going to call reference. And we're going to see how that looks in the query dependency editor. So duplicate is just next to it and reference is underneath it like that. So if I click on duplicate, the yet another error is not a precedent of it. But if I click on yet another ref, then it is a, a reference of it. So that's how it can work. Um, we can also do things with merging queries. And merging queries leads us to another common way to break things. So data source errors are very, very common as well. Here I'm in Power BI and I just refresh something. And if I scroll up, I can see that I have a few different errors here. A lot of them are repeated though. Uh, this is an SQL connection that's telling me there's there's no issue there. This is in fact because I'm not connected to the VPN I should be. Or this other one, this is saying, please rebuild this data combination. So this is a pretty typical type as well that will go through how to avoid those. So here I'm in Excel and let's explore it from Excel. I do like this queries pane that you get on Excel. Uh, it's in the data tab and the queries and connections. You can turn that on or off. And you can double click to open any query like this. And over here it says this one, please rebuild this data combination and this sort of error. This is very, very common from merging queries. In fact, the default Excel and Power BI options, I don't particularly like for this one. So if you want to change some settings, you can go to file options and settings, and then you have two different things here. So data source settings, this is where you can change data sources that you might get from websites, from a database, SQL Server, uh, Power BI, data sources even, etc. So you can change them here. You will need to edit permissions and add some login credentials if you need to. Uh, but the other one I'm going to show you more of is the query options. And two things in particular. The first one, data load. I always choose never detect column types and headers for unstructured columns. What this means is that the thing that I had earlier, where it would auto detect on a split column or a new column, it would add that extra step. It doesn't do that if I click here. And the other one I choose is in privacy. I choose always ignore privacy level settings. Um, this sounds scary, but actually, uh, in most cases where you're getting data from a secure connection and you don't have anything that's too confidential in two sources, then it should be okay. Uh, what it's trying to prevent you doing is writing back into a database with some confidential data from another place. Uh, it's a very, very obscure scenario, so I'm not sure why that is the default, but in certain cases I could see it being a thing. Well, once we disable that, I can see all of these queries are not working. But then if I go to refresh preview, I can see that it's working and I can go to refresh all and eventually those errors go away. Now, sometimes things are fine in Power Query, but when they load into Power Pivot or Power BI, they cause issues here. So here, notice how each of these have something that's unrelated. This is only in fact one error, which is in this table that says there's a duplicate value and it's not allowed for the one side of a one-to-many relationship. And I can see here that I have that relationship. And let's go to the actual table and see what it is. So I have engine, mirror, steering wheel. So this is how it should look. These are unique. But if I go into my query editor, I can see that over here in this one, I have the word mirror twice. And notice that I actually removed the duplicates right before I loaded it. However, Power Query recognizes 
uppercase and lowercase as non-duplicates, whereas Power Pivot and Power BI recognizes it as duplicates. So in effect, even though I have removed the duplicates, it didn't actually fix the problem. I need to go a step above and I need to go to Transform Format and capitalize each word. And then if I load, I will then remove duplicates will actually remove it. And then if I load, I will not get that. Let's look at steps that you should avoid doing in Power Query unless you need to. So one is moving columns and reordering them. And let me show you why. If I just move this one that way, if I look at the step reordered columns, the code is actually referring to every single column, the name of every column. And that is unnecessary for just moving. Uh, in fact, moving columns, sorting columns, things like that, you don't really need to do. Certain transformation types are risky in Power Query and you should avoid them for as long as you can. So things like moving columns and renaming columns, detect data types, remove the columns that you don't need. Often you should avoid using these until you absolutely have to. I have another video where I talk about safe ways to remove columns and rows that I'll link to in the description below. And my name is David Benayim. I am an MVP who has been invited by Microsoft to make this video. So thank you very much for inviting me. But I do have another YouTube channel which has a lot of other videos on Excel, Power BI, Power Query specific stuff, even PowerPoint, Microsoft Teams, and non-Microsoft technologies as well. So feel free to check out my channel um, if you like the content on this video. Thanks for watching.